Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Diesel Creek, and it is a lovely, frosty fall morning this morning. Today's exciting because today, well, today for you guys, I still have weeks to wait, but today for you, we're going to be finally bringing electricity into the farm here. If you haven't seen the previous videos on the uh, mega project, basically, that it is to get electricity down to my shop, well, I'll link the videos down in the description, but to catch you up real quick, basically the nearest power pole is like 2,600 feet away all the way across the road, across my neighbor's property. That's where the nearest power pole is. So I wanted it all underground. He didn't want any uh, poles sticking up on his side of the road either. Can't blame the fella. So me and him had to come up with an easement and had to come down through his property with buried conduit all the way across the road, buried conduit and run it all the way down to the shop there. So we did a lot of trenching and a lot of conduit burying in the last couple videos on this project. I finally had to pay the power company's ransom. I ran out of time and ideas basically to try to get them to work with me at all. I'm not gonna turn this into a uh, pity party or a woe is me fest. Basically, the power company is not my friend and they're charging me $52,000 to pull the wire through the conduit and set the transformer. That's it. I already did all the work. I already had about 15,000 wrapped up in conduit here and they're charging me another $52,000 to come out to pull that wire and set that transformer. There was a lot of people in the last videos were saying, well, Matt, why don't you just do that work yourself and save the money? I would have loved to. I'm not allowed. They will not allow anybody to pull the primary wire in because this is high voltage primary wire they claim that they will not allow anybody to do it other than themselves. I think that's a load of crap because what difference does it make which wire you're pulling through? It's not like it's live while you're pulling it through. All they got to do is show up and connect it. Anyways, enough about the drama side of this job. I, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> it is what it is. I had to pay it and it really hurt, but <laughs> we, we need power is what it comes down to. So. Today I have to get the pull tape pulled through this conduit before they can show up and pull the wire. They can't even be bothered to put the mule tape in. I have to do all that as well. That's required on my end. So I should have done it probably as soon as we got the conduit in the ground, but you know, I had other pressing issues and I could definitely tell that the power company wasn't uh, scratching at the door to get in here and hurry up and get this job done. I knew I had a couple months, so it's been probably two or three, eh, coming up on three months since I got the conduit in the ground. So hopefully we don't have any uh, water, anything that's in the conduit, no obstructions, and we're gonna be able to get the uh, string line pulled through so that they can pull the wire back through. If you've never seen this done, it's pretty fascinating. It, it's kind of like a mind blower. You wouldn't think that it works as well as it does, barring any issues, like I said, obstructions in the conduit. But uh, we're going to be pulling the string line through like 600 feet of conduit with nothing but a shopping bag, a string line, and a shop vac. So this is our first junction point here where the conduit has to come up into a pull box. I've had tape covering it up so hopefully we don't have any uh, junk found its way down inside the conduit that would make doing this exponentially more difficult. So if you've never been around it, I know this probably seems pretty wonky. But I assure you, this is the way professional electricians pull string line through conduit every day to pull wire. I know the first time I saw it done, I was pretty mind blown. Hey guys, just want to interrupt the video real quick to remind you guys that the holidays are rapidly approaching here. So if you were thinking about picking yourself up any Diesel Creek merchandise from the store, the sooner you can do that, the better. Beat that holiday rush if you guys are interested in picking something up for yourself or a friend or a loved one. Dieselcreek.com, get there before the holiday rush. Link's down below. If you're doing a short run, you can probably get away with just kind of holding your hand around this nozzle and kind of sealing it up as best you can. But for as long as a run as we're pulling, we better make sure we have a really good airtight seal here. So we got our shop vac all set up there. The hose is taped in the end of conduit. I have the vacuum plugged into that little battery generator thing. We need to head down to the end of the line here and get ready to insert the string line. Now we just got to run up to the other end of the conduit and we're going to put in the string line.
our conduit. There's our conduit, kind of hiding on us. So there's the other end of our conduit run here. It appears we've had a good seal on it this whole time, so that's good. This here is just a regular old Walmart shopping bag attached to a roll of masonry string and it is going to blow your mind how fast this thing unspools and sucks through this conduit. I just got to run back to the other end, switch on the vacuum and we'll be ready to go. All right, here we are, I got the vacuum running. And the vacuum is clear down the driveway down there. You guys can barely see it, it's that speck way down there. Let's go ahead and send this thing. Nailed it. The bag is now inside that vacuum cleaner. It's definitely a lot better to have two people doing this, but uh, one man band marches on. the bag isn't where I thought it was it's usually in the sweeper okay good it got hung up in our hose luckily if it was still down in the conduit we would potentially have to go pull it all the way back out the other direction to try to get the string bag out and send it again oh I see what I did I didn't have it tied properly I missed one of the loops on the, the bag handle huh. anyway there's our string line as promised during this whole process of disassembling everything, I can't express how important it is to make sure you don't lose the string back down in the hole. Always try to make sure you have a hold on it somewhere or it's tucked under something. So at this point now, we cut this end off the string with the bag attached. Now we connect our string line over to our mule tape here. So we use the string line to go through the hole first because the mule tape is a little bit too heavy to pull with the uh, vacuum cleaner. Plus you have the resistance of the roll here, so it probably would never make it. So the string line unravels very nice and easy. Then we pull the mule tape with the string line. All right, we're all set up at the second junction box now. I've already pulled that one through as you guys saw. I'm gonna go ahead and kick the vacuum on and we're gonna try something different on this one. So even though I said we couldn't do it, we're gonna go straight with the mule tape on this one. I got it rigged up pretty nice here. It spins with pretty much very little effort on this ladder. We got some pretty good suction. We're gonna give her a go. Oh, fingers crossed, I hope it works. Oh yeah.
Must be the end. That worked out excellent, and we didn't even have to waste any string to do it. Let's go check at the other end. All right, here's the part where you gotta cross your fingers and hope that the string is in the pipe here. Oh, and we got lucky it is. Sweet! I really did not think that this vacuum would pull this heavy tape, but man, I'm sure glad that it is. Just pulling the mule tape straight away saves a lot of time. Beautiful. We'll stick the excess that came all the way into the vacuum cleaner back in the tube and then pull the back. We'll pull the excess back onto the roll so we're not just wasting it. I've been leaving about two to three feet sticking out the end of each section. We're up here near the road. This is the stretch of the line that comes from my property over to the neighbor's property. So he's up there ready to stick the bag in the hole. We just got a kicker on. There we go. <laughs> it's amazing how well that works. Look at that beauty. It's got some speed when it hits that vacuum too because look how much extra it puts into the can. Uh oh, this one's hung up. Well, I just got back from the power company store depot there and they gave me, well they didn't give me, I paid for these uh, tubs here. They're actually upside down at the moment, but these are the pad mounts for transformers, or in our case, we're gonna use one of them as a transformer mount, and the other three are for kind of like a junction box, basically. So let's go ahead and uh, set these things off. All right, I got the excavator warming up. Let's go install these pad boxes.
The first thing I want to do is blow out all these leaves out of this hole. There's like a foot and a half of leaves in here. Can't even see the bottom of the ditch, so we're going to go get the vent track, blow all these things out of here.
not a whole lot to it we just tossed the pad in there I got it pretty well squared up with my road and all these conduits have to be in front of this line right here so they are I could have done a better job of trying to hold these things nice and straight when I buried them but too late now uh, part of a learning experience I've never actually done any underground electric work like this it's my first go around at it so live and learn better to learn on your own projects than a customers let's bury this thing All right, we're all set up, ready to suck through the last piece of uh, pull tape. And then we're gonna be ready for the power company to show up tomorrow. Oh, I am so excited to have real power. Oh yeah, that's, that's probably nothing to worry about. Cowabunga. pull tape haha -ha, we do have pull tape great success well it might seem counterintuitive but I actually just pulled the rope right back out of that conduit but I marked the end first where it stopped on the roll so now I can use this mule tape that we pulled through the conduit to figure out just exactly how many feet of entrance wire I have to buy because in the $52,000 ransom that I had to pay the power company that did not include the wire from the transformer to the building. Why? I have no idea, but it's on me. There's my mark. So 127 feet, six inches on each leg. And we're gonna add a couple feet to the transformer side and I already allowed for extra wire on the box side so why don't we just call it 130 feet and we know that we'll have enough and I need to get three of those to come from the transformer to the meter socket on the shop so now that I know how much wire I need I'm gonna wrap the mule tape back up again and then suck it back through but that's quick and easy to do now all right, well, with any luck, this is the last time you're going to get to see the, the old spool of mule tape ripping through the conduit. There we go. <laughs> that is impressive. All righty, I got this first pad all dressed back up as much as I'm going to do it for now. I know it still looks like a bomb went off, but I'm not going to bother to really put the spit shine on her because I know the power company guys are going to be working in here when they set the transformer and pull the wire. So I'm certain that they're going to just botch this all up again. So no sense working twice. Uh, we still have our water line poking up here and eventually, sooner than later I even, I'm going to uh, finish trenching from that water line across the driveway, tie the water line into the well. And while I have that ditch open, I'm going to extend the conduit out of the box that I stubbed up right there for the house. And I'm going to go ahead and extend it across the driveway at the same time. I really, this driveway is so nice now. I hate to cut it open, but uh, sometimes you just don't have a choice. So when it's a nice day and we have good weather, I'll go ahead and do that and uh, try to be as minimally invasive as possible. But, well, it's great to have good friends in the trades that you can suck in. Buddy Adam here came over to help me pull our entrance wire here. Got our three legs of 130 feet, and I've got some uh, some gypsy rigging going on over there by the service entrance, and we're gonna pull this stuff through. We're doing this like professionals over here. 
I got us a little shiv block rigged up hanging off the excavator bucket. I just got to pass our mule tape through that and start yanking. Oh yeah, this is going to be the ticket. Ready? That's it. All right. All right, we're good there. That's past all the tape. I'm glad I guesstimated that, right? All right, well, thanks to my buddy Adam, we got those wires pulled through there. We, he got everything connected, so I know that I didn't do it wrong. An electrician that actually knows what he's doing did it. So we should all be good here. The only thing that's going to change is when the power company comes, we'll have to pull off those two copper bars I have jammed in there, making that meter socket connection right now. And uh, they'll stick the meter socket in there, of course. With the meter socket side all buttoned up and correctly installed now, though, it left me uh, without a place to hook my generator. So, I did a little improv. Yep. Yeah, that's not sketchy at all. But we're running the whole building remotely now. This is a very temporary thing. The power company is supposed to be here later today. So, hopefully this is going to be gone by the end of the day and a nice transformer sitting there. And we won't have to listen to that thing anymore, nor fuel it up. That's right, I said it. After 10 months, the power company, the power company, are finally supposed to be here this very morning and start pulling wire and getting me connected. I am so excited. It is a beautiful morning, guys. You know why? There's a crisp in the air, the sun is shining, and the power company is sitting in my driveway and they're gonna get me hooked up to the electrical grid. Oh, it's a great day. Power company guys back there. Power company guys at the other end of the driveway. Power company guys everywhere. That's what I like to see. At least 52 grand gets you some hustle when they show up. Well, hopefully I just shut that thing down from powering the shop for the last time. We can disconnect it, move it out of the way. Power company guys are gonna do their thing. Morning, cows. wire pulling trailer and that thing's sweet. <laughs> I got some like evening class. Oh, you're yeah. working about the new work zone? Yeah. I do that. Yeah, I heard it's like 4.30 to dark or something like that. Right now. Check it out, guys. You know what that meter means? That means that we are officially connected to the power grid. <laughs> Hats off for electricity. You never thought you'd really miss it that much until you don't have it for so long. So it only took 10 months to get electric down here. 
roughly 10 months from the time that I put in the application to the guys finishing up here today. And, well, I guess it's worth the wait. All I know is I am super happy to see this transformer on this pad rather than a generator backed up to those entrance wires. Nothing humming, no noises, no obnoxious generator running, no diesel being burnt. We're going to be just sipping on fuel around here since we're not running generators. And the best thing is we're coming into winter here. I can actually keep the shop at a reasonable temperature. When I get here in the morning, it'll still be nice and warm, not have to wait for two hours to get it heated up to where you can actually feel comfortable in there. Now, I probably didn't get to record very much while the power company was here. Uh, a lot of them didn't want to be filmed, and I don't blame them. I, I try to always ask before I go sticking a camera in somebody's face because I wouldn't appreciate it myself. But uh, when they rolled in, they rolled in heavy. I don't know if you guys could tell in the little clips that I did get, but there was, I think, like 10 trucks here. I mean, there was all the power company trucks. So they knocked it out in one heck of a hurry. I think they got here at like 8 o'clock this morning, and they were done and gone and out of here by 10.30. So they really knocked it out of the park. Here's the first pull box up here by the gate. I was kind of bummed out that these are such big, huge, bulky boxes. I mean, really, for all they do, I mean, there's just a, a wire coming out of the ground, and it connects to the other side and goes right back in the ground. That's all that is. I think it could be easily tucked into the vault that we buried there and just have a flat top on it, but this is what I'm stuck with, unfortunately. We'll plant some bushes around that thing so it's not so unsightly, I guess, but it's fine for now. I didn't spend a whole lot of time making this pretty around these box sites um, because I knew that there was going to be 20 people in here and they were going to be driving trucks on it and everything else. So now that they're all done, I can rake this around a little bit better with a hand rake, throw some seed and straw on it. And we'll have nice grass there in the springtime. So this is the one up by the road, and then we got the two more down through there. Well, we're down here at the second pull box. They've left me a little bit of a mess down here. It's mainly just the uh, the mule tape to clean up, and they left a couple of these uh, Chinese finger trap looking contraptions, which they use to pull the wire. So they just stab these onto the end of the cable, and then when you pull it tight, it kind of clamps down on the wire, and they can pull it right through like nobody's business. I don't know if those are really worth hanging on to, but I'm a hoarder, so probably will. Same with the mule tape. I would, well, I'd like to keep it, but it looks like they balled it up pretty good here, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'm going to sit here and play, take an hour to string this all back out and wrap it up nice, but they did leave me a nice little gift here. A pair of needle-nose pliers. So I'll get this little pad site cleaned up here and uh, keep on moving along. Now we got that one all cleaned up. On to the next one. Yeah, this one's not too bad. A couple little pieces of stripped wire casing, a couple little pieces of plastic, broken pair of safety glasses, cut off zip tie. They were fast, I wouldn't give them too much credit on housekeeping. I was just happy they showed up. I won't complain about picking up a little bit of trash. All right, well, I was thinking about hurrying up and throwing some grass seed on these things and fixing them all up nice. But honestly, the whole area around both of these two down here on the flat stretch of my driveway need pretty serious rework around them anyway, so I don't think I'm going to waste the grass seed on them. The one up at the gate, though, we should probably put something on that. So we're also done in this area, too, by the transformer, so I'm going to fix it up a little bit better and grass seed it for the year. Most of this will be grown in. The only thing we're going to disrupt is where that pipe is stubbed out of the ground there. We're going to have to dig that up again here in the future, but probably not till spring. So we'll just seed and straw the whole thing and make it all pretty like, and then it can be done with. Well, guys, it has been an adventure and a headache, but it is finally through. We have power, and uh, we're a little bit lighter in the wallet department for it, but uh, it's hard to beat electricity, especially this time of year. It got awful cold after the power company came and did their thing, so those uh, 
The mini split systems that we installed a couple videos ago have been doing a great job keeping the shop heated up. I've been getting a lot of people asking me if I'm still planning on installing the wood boiler for the floor heat, and the answer is absolutely. I was hoping to have it done by now, but uh, well, that's just the way she goes, I guess. Now, I would have sworn that I filmed an ending clip for this video, but for the life of me, I cannot find it. You guys probably know what I'm going to say by now anyways. If you like this video, do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button down below the video. It really helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you guys a dime. As I believe I mentioned earlier in the video, we are coming into the holiday rush for the uh, merchandise. So if you guys are trying to get any of that stuff in before Christmas time, get your orders in as soon as possible so you can have it on the big day. That's dieselcreek.com. Link is down in the description. That's all I've got for now, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.